grace. There are some dark clouds above me. I'm thinking it might rain. But soon I will be on my way to catch a late night screening of Fast X. Welcome to Initial Reactions, where I give my preconceptions about a movie and then my first thoughts about said movie as I'm leaving the theater. Every time a new Fast and Furious movie comes out, I am reminded of its very humble beginnings. It was a small scale story about an FBI agent infiltrating an underground racing ring to see if they were linked to a series of heists. It did pretty well for itself. With a budget of $38 billion, it had an opening weekend of $40 million and would go on to gross over $200 million worldwide. Naturally, a sequel was expected. And so, Too Fast and Too Furious came out, and yeah, it is rough. Not only does it have the worst score on Rotten Tomatoes, it also is the only movie in the series to have a rotten audience score. It performed worse at the box office than the predecessor. And then the third movie, Tokyo Drift, actually performed even worse. Initially, the plan was to just end it there. Let the Fast and Furious be a trilogy of movies that were a product of the early 2000s. But then, three years later, they came out with Fast and Furious. Yeah, just Fast, not Fast and Furious 4, just Fast and Furious. I don't want to turn this into a box office recap of this franchise, but... All in all, they've all done really well, with Furious 7 and Furious 8 becoming the highest grossing entries with 1.5 and 1.2 billion respectively. But the most recent movies, Hobbs and Shaw and F9, have shown a decline in the franchise's box office takes. Now F9, you could give it a pass because of COVID, but Fast 10 is performing slightly worse. This wouldn't sound so terrible if it weren't for the fact that the budget for this movie has ballooned to $340 million. For comparison, Avengers Infinity War's budget was $325. Now, there's perfectly reasonable explanation as to why the budget got that big. It was filmed during early 2022, late 2021, and that was when COVID restrictions were still very much in place. It was taking, there was a huge sequence that takes place in Rome with a lot of practical effects and Rome is one of the most popular cities in the world, and I also imagine that COVID restrictions must be still pretty heavy, or were still pretty heavy, since the country of Italy was the epicenter of the pandemic at one point. You also got Aquaman, Jack Reacher, Ratcatcher, and Captain Marvel joining the cast, as well as the likelihood that returning actors are asking for a higher pay grade. Add all those factors together and suddenly it's a bit more understandable as to how the budget got to that size. But for a movie whose budget is the 8th most expensive ever, that money better be shown on screen. The action sequences better be on par with that of the likes of Top Gun Maverick. I've heard mixed reviews about this movie, but it's a Fast and Furious movie. You, you get what you expect. Jason Momoa apparently is great as the villain in this, so that's something to look forward to. However, I think the best way to look at this movie, as well as any future Fast and Furious movies, is they've hit their peak ages ago, and now we're just going along for the ride. Apparently, they've kept things a bit more grounded this time around. There's no cars flying off into space or anything like that. They're also showing that they do apparently care about continuity and having an overarching saga. Jason Momoa is playing the son of the bad guy from Fast Five and has now spent the past decade crafting the ultimate revenge plan. I appreciate the fact that they are sort of going back to the franchise's roots of being a heist franchise. Even if this movie does end up being just another ball of insanity with cars crashing and explosions everywhere. It's getting late and oh, getting awfully close to movie time, so I will fast 10 my seatbelts and I'll see you afterwards. You will never be able to break my family. Well, I can say with absolute confidence that that was one of the Fast and Furious movies. Honestly, 
What can you say about these movies that hasn't been said before at this point? It's loud, it's dumb, it's fun, but at the same time, it can get tedious. Jason Momoa was a highlight in this movie. He really did a good job as the villain. In terms of plot and how it handles all the different characters, it's trying really hard to be the Infinity War of this saga. I'm sorry if this is sounding vague, but there is no way to talk about the story beats and the characters and all the other stuff without going into spoiler territory. You know how I said earlier that at a budget of $340 million, they better show the money on screen? Well, for the most part, they do. There's lots of bombastic action scenes that feel real. And you can tell that it's shot on location and not in front of a sound and not on a sound stage in front of a green screen. Don't get me wrong; it does have its moments of wonky CGI and moments that are obviously green screen, but for the most part, they put the money into well, creating the most outlandish action sequences that you expect in a Fast and Furious movie. In car terms, I am neutral on this movie. I am not excited to see what happens in Fast 11 or Fast X Part 2, but I am curious to see what does happen next. If anything, this is one of the few modern-day blockbuster franchises that's building up towards an ending that probably won't disappoint me. Now the question is, do I recommend this movie? I mean, there are worse ways, worse movies to spend a couple of hours. I guess if you've got nothing better to do and you've got a few bucks to spend, or if you just want some dumb, stupid, fun, blockbuster action, or if you're a completionist who has to see all the Fast and Furious movies, then you could definitely do worse than Fast X.